This is my favorite box to get because it just means life is so much easier. Thank you so much HelloFresh for partnering with us on another video. You guys already know, I know that we don't have to convince you at all because you know how much we love HelloFresh. For us, it's super nice to, especially for days like that were super busy or weeks that were super busy, It's it just takes the guessing game out of dinner. And we love that they send pre-packaged meals straight to our door. We don't have to go to the grocery store and we have every ingredient that we need. And we were talking about this the other day, but it is so hard to cook for two people. Yeah. And like really nail it, because we're not big leftover people. Like we'll eat them, but it's not like our favorite thing. So to be able to cook a meal and both of us have enough to eat is awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. We haven't gotten out with HelloFresh in a little while. So we're super pumped to have them again. I'm excited to see what the what meals they are. Yeah, it's always so fun. So you can choose kind of your food preferences. We don't eat seafood, so we always opt out of that option. But they have those selections for you to choose so that it suits your lifestyle best. I think it's nice too because a lot of times I'll make usually like protein and then like a side I'm, it's hard for me to do sides sometimes. Yeah. So it's nice terrible. this is already paired and uh -huh. everything. And they're made by chefs. So you're getting meals that are going to taste delicious. We've talked about this before, but we especially love that we get to do this together oh, they're right on top and of make them together. So they send you the cards with all of the meals. We have one pan Santa Fe pork tacos. Yum. So good. Gnocchi with spinach and grape tomatoes. Ooh, I'm gonna like that one. Yeah, you will. That's that one. Sheet pan Monterey Jack unfried chicken with roasted carrots, potato wedges, and sriracha mayo. See, like that. I probably would have never put all that together. No, there is just no way. I wouldn't know to do those together. Those look good. Yeah. What one do you want to make tonight? That I one? I don't know. Maybe this one. So as you guys can see, they have everything pre-packaged every step-by-step -step how to do it come pre-packaged everything for each meal comes in a separate bag so you're not going to be confused they have it broke down for you it's so so super simple mm. you know hello fresh really helps us get our veggies in yeah, it does. <laughs> we're horrible at eating veggies Mmm, very flavorful. I know a few of you have said in the past how much you love HelloFresh as well. So I'm gonna leave my code on the screen and thank you so much again, HelloFresh, for partnering with us again on another video. So this might be a super random clip in the vlog, but I was cleaning our lampshades and I thought, oh my gosh, I need to share this with you guys because it is such a game changer. So I used to use just the duster, like the Swiffer duster to clean my lampshades, but it never really, really worked. Now I use the lint roller and you guys, it works so good. It just cleans off every single bit of lint and dust that's on your lampshade. As you can see, hopefully you can see, let's see. It's so satisfying. So I'll just go over it, you know, one or two times, just depending on how dirty it is. And it's amazing. I love cleaning my lampshades now. Cause before, like there was times when honestly, I don't know that I ever cleaned the lampshade ever just cause I didn't really know how, but the lint roller hack is brilliant. It's literally brilliant. Okay, I'm gonna share the knobs with you guys for the little dresser. Now I ordered these knobs and I thought that they were gonna be a lot bigger, but I did hold them up to the little drawers and I think they might be kind of cool. They're tiny, look at these little knobs. Aren't they so cute? I thought they were antique or real vintage knobs, but they're not. They just were made to look like they're vintage. This one actually has a little mark. Can you see it? Yeah, right there. It's just a little mark that none of the other ones have that, but I kind of like it. I wish that a few of the others were scuffed up like that. 
But again, when I first got them, I was like, oh no, these are not gonna work. These are so tiny. But then I was like, you know what? It's kind of cool. And if I end up doing the tassel, which I know a lot of you guys don't prefer the tassel, but I think it could be a really cool look. I think with having the big, huge tassel with these tiny little knobs, it could be really cool. Now, when I was, I went to Paris a few years ago for a workshop and to photograph a wedding, and we went to this chateau. I remember seeing all the doors having these gorgeous keys and these huge tassels, and it always stuck in my mind. It was just a special little detail that I feel like just really stuck with me. And as you guys know, I really love a old world touch to my home. I just find it so warm and inviting and comfortable and cozy and sometimes glamorous, like a big, huge tassel. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me go grab it. Okay, this is the tassel that I bought and it's huge, <laughs> I know. I got this from McGee & Co. I will link it down below, but I just thought it reminded me so much of that chateau and just the feeling that I got when I was in there. I mean, I was just absolutely smitten with that place. It was so beautiful. Like, I just can't believe people lived like that. I mean, wow. So I don't know if the tassel is going to make it. I know some of you are a little skeptical, but I do have plans. So we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. The only problem that I have is the top drawer of the little dresser that I have has a keyhole, but it didn't come with the key. I got the dresser for $40. So right now I'm trying to make it, you know, kind of strong again and stable. It's a little wobbly. And then I'm taking off the varnish and just because it has a little bit of like a red yellow hue and I want to neutralize it a lot and just kind of have that more matte finish to it where it can patina over time. Then I plan on just using a matte wax, matte clear wax over the top of it so that it stays matte and that it ages over time. So that's my plan for that. But our bedroom, actually, I'm thinking, I'm looking, I'm actually 90% sure that I'm going to buy a new bed, like the headboard bed, because I find that having the tufted bed in our bedroom is, it's hard to do like anything other than like a tidy bed like if i have the bed super relaxed it feels a little bit odd and i think it's because the bed is so glamorous so i am going to order that but we are going on vacation soon so i thought maybe i should wait until we get back just to make sure it doesn't get delivered while we're gone so having that clean bed like clean line bed a little bit more contemporary i think will be really really beautiful to put the dresser next to it, that's a little bit more of an antique vibe. I, One of you left a comment saying that you also love the juxtaposition between modern and vintage, and I do too. I, there's something so beautiful about mixing the two styles. I just did a very quick video, just in my own words, I didn't go super, super in depth about the rustic luxury or rustic elegance style. And I basically just tried to quickly make a video that was, wasn't too complicated. That was a simple explanation and something very achievable and didn't go into too many details because like any style, you can really get down to the nitty gritty of the different things you can do and all the different things, but I wanted it to be simple. Anyway, so that is my plan potentially for the bedroom. I might still keep our mirrored bedside tables because I, I do still love them. I think that they are gorgeous and they add a little glam to our space. Anyway, I think I'm gonna go outside real quick, you guys. It is burning outside. So that's like another reason why I've been putting off sanding the dresser because I'll be out there sanding in the blazing oven hell heat <laughs> it is hot out there but let's go put these knobs on and see how they look 
I'm gonna put the drawers back in. I'm gonna show you guys everything so you can see kind of how it's looking right now. Essentially, all I've done is take off the, the varnish from the top sides and front. I, I didn't even bother with the back of it because the, the stain remover is like so strong and I wanted to use the least amount as possible because it's just as, whew, it's intense. Okay, let's head outside and put these knobs on. Okay, so this is where I left off, you guys. I just walked out and left it alone. So I do need to sand it and still get some of that yellow out, but I'm really happy with the tone that is coming from the natural wood. And then I stained, or sorry, I stripped the front and the sides but yeah, I haven't done much. As you can see back here, you can see how red it is and a little bit yellow. Like I said, I don't really plan on doing much of that, but we just need to secure this a little bit more because as you can see down here, it's not really together so well. So let's take a look at the drawers with the new knobs and see how we look like it. too impatient i just have been so excited to do this i love the little knobs oh my gosh i love them i did not know that it would make this big of a difference and it looks even better in person it's really hard to really get a good feeling for it through video but oh my gosh it's so sweet oh my gosh it's hard to see like the whole thing with like the you know drop cloth and stuff but how cute is that i love it and then of course i want to neutralize this even more if i can i still need to sand it i've literally only just started this project, but I got these knobs in and I was so excited and anxious to share with the, you guys. But I wanna go grab the tassel so that you can get a feeling for that as well. I have a key, so I have it just kind of on there, just kind of sitting in there. So it would probably hang a little lower because it would be from the key right here and hang down. That's if I could find a key and if we like it. I don't know though, it almost doesn't need this extra little piece. Like I feel like the knobs and the piece alone doesn't need, like I feel like almost sometimes just keeping it simple just makes so much more of a difference. But I'm obviously gonna keep this and use it somewhere else or maybe add it on there later on in a bedroom if it needs a little oomph, but you guys. What do we think about these little knobs? I personally, I, I just kind of love them. I think that they're adorable. So I'm gonna keep you guys updated on, sorry, there's a car. I'm gonna keep you updated on everything that I do. Next up, we're gonna sand and then just seal it with a wax and then we should be done. But I don't think I'm gonna spend any more time stripping it. It's all gonna be sanding. You guys, my back is like dripping in sweat from being outside for literally five minutes sharing the knobs with you. But what do we think about those knobs? I really think that they're so cute. And what's funny is had it not been a mistake that I ordered those, I don't know that I would have ordered those. You know what I mean? Like I think I would have tried to get a bigger one or something different, but I love them. I just think that I love the small next to the dresser. It like, I don't know. I really love the, the scale of the little tiny knobs to the dresser. It's a small dresser too. So it's not like this, it's this massive dresser, but I'm about to make some cookies. Hence all this stuff back here. I'm making these cookies that my friend makes all the time. It's a New York Times cookie recipe. It's super fussy and really, honestly, a lot of things that you probably can make regular chocolate chip cookies without doing all of this, but they are so good that 
it might be worth all the fuss. But they are super fussy and you need a lot of like annoying ingredients. However, we're gonna make them. So they're made with bread flour and cake flour. And also I'm using three different chocolate chips. I'm using a milk chocolate, a dark chocolate, and like little mini semi-sweet mini morsels. It's a lot, but I'm gonna link the recipe down below for you guys because they really, really are so, so good. I got the recipe from my friend Lauren and they're amazing. They are so good. So basically you make the, you make the dough and then you wrap it up in saran wrap and then you can freeze it. So you can pull out, cut off two pieces if you wanna make just two pieces or bake, that's all you wanna do. And then you have like the, it's almost like a little roll of cookie dough in your freezer ready for you when you want more. And that's what I kind of like about them. Now, she says to go get the little like discs from Sir La, what is that store called? Sir La Top? Oh, what is that store called? Mm, you know what I'm talking about. It's at the tip of my, it's like Sir La, well, one of you will comment because I can't remember, which by the way, I learn so much from you guys. I love when you comment, when we mention something and you tell us something else or something more or you know a different way that you do things and it is so fun to read your comments. Now, I know that we cannot get back to every single comment but we read all of them and we are so grateful for all of the kind comments that you guys leave us. We have the nicest comments and I just have to say you guys are the best for that. So thank you. And also thank you for always sharing like your family traditions with us or things that you do or how you clean something or how you bake your cookies. Like we love that. It's actually probably the thing we love the most about the comments. You guys teach us so much. Like just the other day, Someone left us a comment and it said when we did the balsamic sparkling water and balsamic and you said that you put that in your vanilla ice cream and it's amazing. So we're gonna have to try that but we would have never known about that had you not commented that. So thank you. Anyway, I'm gonna light one of these candles before I get to baking. So Iconic Scents sent over, which I don't really get PR. I know that I've heard so many people when I'm following them, they get mountains and loads of PR. That's not me. But I did get these iconic candles and I'm so excited. You guys know I love candles and I love iconic scents. I think that they have some of the most unique scents. And my little Jo Malone right here actually completely burned out last night. So. I'm gonna clean that out. I like to reuse my candle jars for my makeup brushes, now my paint brushes, and cotton swabs, your cotton rounds, or your Q-tips, things like that. They're so cute to kind of reuse your, your candle holders for that. I also use them to like put matches in for the coffee table. You can get those stickers off Amazon where you can put it on the bottom of the, the jar and then so you can strike it anyway they sent over a little note it says hi brandy we hope you enjoy these three unique scents in our brand from their new collection welcome to african soil xoxo the iconic team look at the artwork too that's on their packaging how beautiful this one is serengeti Oh my gosh, it's like a deep, this, I already kind of smelled them. They're kind of like a deep, sexier scents. Mmm, so good. This one is Hide and Smoke with the little elephant. I love elephants. Elephants and giraffes are my favorite. This one, still, so it's just deep. I don't really know. It's like kind of deep, but also has like a sweetness. Mmm. No, it's smoky. It's more smoky than sweet. But my favorite is Amber Dusk. It has a little giraffe. Look how beautiful. I want to paint that. 
I want to paint that. That's so beautiful. This one is like musky. And, oh, it's just like, it's sexy. So I'm going to light this one and keep this one in the kitchen. I like just want to keep these boxes because they're so beautiful. I love the artwork. And I love, like this one is like, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. So beautiful. Anyway, thank you Iconic Sense for sending those over. They didn't ask me to share. I just wanted to share them with you guys because you guys know how much I love Iconic Sense. I'm going to light this. Then I have to pull up the recipe. And I'm excited because I'm going to leave that other one there so I can clean it when I'm done with the cookies and keep it. But I'm excited to bake these cookies so that Zach has them ready for him when he gets home. I also need to butter him up because I need him to help me with the dresser. I feel like we're gonna drag it inside and glue it in here because it's so hot. Like I want to avoid being outside for as long as possible. Like I get a sweat stash, my back is dripping. It's like a whole thing. It's hot out there. Anyway. I'm gonna get to baking these cookies. And again, I'll leave the recipe down for you guys, but I'll show them to you when they're all done. They're so good. And you do, after you make the dough, you want to put the dough in the freezer or the refrigerator. I can't remember what the recipe says for a while before you cook them. So that's what we're gonna do. I also want to thank you guys for coming and watching and supporting the vlogs. I try to do home decor videos and all of that, but I feel like I am way more of a casual person. I want to, I get excited to share these little tiny things with you guys as I do them. So, you know, if I buy a new piece and I, you know, want to decorate a little area, I sometimes feel like I have to wait to film a like home decor video and recently I was talking to Zach and I said you know I think right now I just really want to get content out and if that's by way of vlogs and to be able to really show you guys these tiny little things which I think is what all what we're all doing I don't think a lot of us are going and redecorating a whole space all the time so adding these tiny little things in my home and being able to vlog that with you guys and you guys watching them and supporting them is so so incredible so thank you so much for watching those so you're gonna see a lot more vlogs but don't worry i'm definitely going to continue to do home decor in the vlogs of some sort now maybe not every single one but i will for sure make sure i title the vlog so you know it's home decor anyway let's make these cookies you guys they're done so we put them in little rolls and then what you're gonna do after you let them whoa I almost dropped the camera <laughs> after you let them um, either in the refrigerator for like 36 hours ish 24 we're not gonna wait though there's no way you're gonna wait <laughs> no way we're gonna wait maybe three hours yeah so we're gonna put this one in the freezer to really get chilled which at Lauren's house we baked them and she put them in the freezer for like two hours and they were good she's 
Does it say to store them in the fridge? And then, like, try to obviously use them sooner than later. Yeah, it does, but Lauren stores just them, keeps them in the freezer. In the freezer. Um, so, yeah, it makes a lot. You can gift them to your friends or family, or you could do like us and just leave them in the freezer for when you want them. I like the freezer idea because there's only two of us. Yeah. And, well, two parts. First of all, I can't eat, if we make a whole batch, I can't eat. 10 cookies in a day or two. Yep. But two, I don't need 10 cookies. <laughs> yeah. I could. But yeah. it's perfect if you could just like, we'll show, we'll show yeah. it later. Cut off yeah. and just, you, you just... know, a couple nights a week, like make a cookie, you know? Yeah, That's and you could cool. put it back in the freezer so you can, yeah, cut off what you yeah. need and, and then, you know, save it. But I do have a question for you. I have a question too. It's 110 degrees outside and you're literally wearing a sweater. <laughs> it's cold in our house. I know, it is. <laughs> it's weird moving here, like, your temperature ranges change. It's, I, it's yeah. burning outside. It's 111 today. But in our house, it's like 70. I like to be comfortable, have a little, I don't know. Yeah, and it's different because, like, people will be like, oh, well, we keep our house at 68. Sometimes when it's like 120 degrees outside, our house is at like 77, but it feels freezing yeah. well, in here. I think that's anywhere where you move. That, that's the worst thing about living in Arizona. You're outside and it's 110, and you go to a, into a store and it's like freezing, freezing. in there. Because or a restaurant like you're too. To it. Yeah, but it's you true. But you go into our house back in the like you just said in Oregon. You know, usually it was between like six, 68 and 73. Now it's like 72 and 77. Yeah. Just because it's so, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, what was your question? I was going to say, what kind of cookies, what's your favorite type of cookie? <gasps> oh no, okay, I'm good. I thought I forgot to put the salt on top, but you do it right before you bake it. Oh, like some uh, Morton. Malton salt. Malton salt. Yeah. Yes, we want to know what's your favorite. Yeah, no, you hold it because you have a better, longer arm. What is your favorite cookie that you like to make? Actually, that's a really good idea. I was telling them earlier that we learned so much from them, like the vanilla balsamic yeah. ice cream. We love getting your guys' comments when you tell us like, oh, I do it like this, or this is something I do, or. And we're trying to get better at it because we do try some stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just, when you're in life, it's hard. We don't always like grab the camera I and know. record it, which maybe we're trying we to should. Be better. Yeah. yeah. But we also, really are trying to be better. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine. I was asking more like what type of cookie, like a... Uh, Snickerdoodle. Do you like... Or... No, oh. like, do you like a thin and chewy? Do you like a crispy? Do you oh, like I like thick? it thick. See, I <laughs> like it perfectly thin and yeah. that perfect just chewy. Oh, no. I like a nice, big, juicy bite. Do you like crunchy at all? Uh, sometimes. It kind of, oh. I, that doesn't bother me. I like gooey more, but I like a thick. <laughs> yeah, that's why sometimes with my cookies, I try to flatten them out. I like just that thin, like two inch cookie. Yeah. Thin, chewy. He, he likes the, um, what's it called? Molasses, like the really thin ones that like literally look like you just scraped it off the Wait, did pan. you used to make those for holidays? Or yeah, something? but I make fluffier ones. Your mom makes those oh, really yeah. thin ones. I could eat like 20 of those. I know, we should make those. We'll make them for Christmas, for Vlogmas. We're gonna go get tacos and a mango margarita. Maybe we'll film a little bit. It's too loud in there, but maybe we'll show yeah. you what we get. Yeah. Um, we'll show you the mango margarita. Yeah. We usually, unless we get tacos, we usually split a bowl there, a vegetarian bowl. Mm -hmm. We've added chicken though. Yeah. Maybe we'll do a little behind the scenes of what we get. Yeah. That might be totally. Yeah, we can. Should we? Yeah. All right. I would say we were good together.